The book is not good. The book is not good. Usually, I only talk about books once a month in my monthly What I Read videos, but this book, this book called for something special. <laughs> Ah, A Little Life is unjustifiably bad. It's the worst book that I've ever had the misfortune to let my eyes see it. I made it to page 370, and that was enough for me to say, this is so over-the-top evil that I can't read anymore. I put the book down, I opened up Goodreads to see what sorts of one-star reviews are people writing, and I learned a lot there, folks. Apparently, from the page 370 and onward, the book just gets darker and darker and darker and worse and worse and worse. One reviewer said that the author was inspired by an artwork that starts white at the top and then just gradually gets darker and darker until at the bottom of the picture it's black. So the whole idea of this story is let's take some characters and let's ruin their life so consistently that by the end there is nothing redeemable left. Why? What is the point of this book? Why does this exist? Why are people reading this? And book talk? What the heck? My dude, where were the trigger warnings? Why did nobody tell me what I was about to witness? I'll be honest with you, on the whole, I am not somebody who needs trigger warnings. I can handle a lot of stuff. But what I just witnessed in this book is the most deranged, depraved garbage I've ever seen. <laughs> who writes this? <clears throat> so let's talk, let's talk story, let's talk what happens. Spoiler alert if you care. You shouldn't care, you need to hear this. The book opens wholesomely enough by introducing these four characters in college who are best buds. You got the artist, the actor, the architect, and Jude, who's becoming a lawyer. The further we get into it, the more that we realize that it's really just about Jude. The other characters don't really matter as much. And the further into Jude's story we get, the more that we realize that he is the most abused, mistreated, unfortunate soul in the entire universe. To a degree that is laughably ridiculous. To a degree that is unbelievable. To a degree that would never happen in real life. <sighs> That's the that's really the problem is that Jude does not exist. Jude is not real. Jude exists to be Hanya Yanagihara's punching bag so that she can abuse the heck out of him so that she can make her little art piece. What's the point? I don't get this. So I did only get to page 370. So some of this stuff that I'm going to present to you I took from Wikipedia. So if I'm not entirely correct on all that happens to Jude, it's because of that, but I tried to get the whole picture of what his story is. So basically, Jude as a baby, is abandoned by his parents, and he is rescued by some Catholic priest dudes who take him to raise in their little Catholic priest place, where all of these Catholic priests abuse child Jude in the way that Catholic priests often abuse little boys. We'll say that. And this happens until one of the priests runs off with Jude and apparently turns Jude into a child prostitute, where he gets further abused by other PDF files. My understanding is that after this happens for a bit, Jude is rescued by government systems. He ends up in a foster adoption care facility where the counselors start abusing him in the same way that the Catholic priests abused him. So he went from abuse from the Catholics to abuse from other people so that the Catholic who was keeping him could profit off of him to abuse within the foster care system. And then he apparently ran away from that at some point, somehow, possibly. And at that point, he became a prostitute by himself for his own survival. And it is at this point, I believe, that one of his Clients, or abusers would be the proper term, because holy smokes, they run him over with a car or something? And that messes up his spine and his legs to the point that he has to have all this work done. And now he's living the rest of his life with a limp and lots of pain that comes in these waves. So if he goes upstairs or like exerts too much or sometimes just out of the blue, he gets these pains in his legs that stem from his spine that are so painful that he sometimes vomits when he gets them or he passes out or he just has to sit there and exist in this flood of pain. <laughs> this is so, st what a stupid book. What a stupid book. You know, but they reveal this info in such little tidbits that you don't really realize or grasp how ridiculous and outlandish the story is. Anyways, <laughs> he's functioning under the belief that this pain should eventually go away, but he later learns from his doctor that the pain is only gonna get worse and worse as time goes by. So basically, sorry, bud, you're gonna live with this and it's gonna get worse forever. <clears throat> 
That's crazy. What else does Jude do? He refuses to take pain medication for that. He just doesn't want to take pain medication. I don't know why. He participates in acts of harming himself to such an extent that the book at one point describes his arms as being so scarred over that there's like not skin left. It's just scars on top of scars where there's like warty lumps rising out of his arms from all of the scars that he has on his arms. And he always wears long sleeve shirts to cover that up. And none of his friends really pick up on that. And the one friend who does, Willem, who realizes what he's doing, is too scared to confront him about it because he doesn't want to lose Jude as a friend. Don't shy away from that conversation, if you know somebody who's dealing with some awful stuff, don't shy away from the conversation. You gotta help them somehow, I feel like. I don't know. Based on this book, if you shy away from that conversation, I can tell you it does not get better for them. It only gets worse. So maybe just have the conversation, even if it's hard, even if you don't want to. Jude has cultivated this relationship with his friends where he is perfectly willing to do an intervention for JB when JB is struggling with drug addiction. And Jude is perfectly willing to listen to all of them tell their backstories and tell about their lives and tell about their hardships and their struggles. But Jude is unwilling to share any of that with them. And they all just accept it. They're all like, we're not going to pry. We don't want to, we're not going to dig into that. Even if we know that you're harming yourself and we know that you're in pain and we know that you're constantly suffering, we don't want to dig into any of that because we don't, we value your friendship so much. You know, we get it. You're a private person. Cool. Jude's doctor, Andy, I got a bone to pick with you, my guy, because you got to be the worst doctor I ever heard of in my life. Andy is always threatening Jude with, I could have you committed, you know, and then you'd have to get treatment. You never take any of my advice. You never like get therapy or take the pain medicine or do anything that I advise you to do, but I could commit you. And then like you would go to a hospital and we would forcibly treat you, but I, I just won't do that. I'll just make that an empty threat that I throw your way all the time. And that's going to be the extent of me being a doctor. Bro, what? What? Wake up, wake up, Andy. This is crazy. <clears throat> so Jude has a doctor that enables him and he has three best friends who enable him. And Jude, as an adult, gets adopted by one of his law professors. And it's this beautiful thing where now he has a family who actually loves him and cares about him. But does his adoptive parents ever do anything to help him? Or do they also just enable him and completely respect his privacy and never really dig into any of that? <sighs> And why does he never go to therapy? Why does he never go to therapy? <laughs> Therapy's good. Therapy's a really good thing. But it almost feels like the author of this book wants us to think that therapy isn't effective or wouldn't be effective for Jude. But she's too scared to put Jude in therapy in the book. So she just makes him deny it. Why is he so opposed to all that? I don't get this book. It doesn't make sense on a logical level. On a plane of existence where I and this book both happen to be in the same universe, why does this book exist? By the time that I finished page 370, I basically looked at my wife and said, this book is torture porn. This book is misery porn. This book is abuse porn. And when I say abuse porn, I mean the kind of abuse that Catholic priests often do to little boys. What are we doing here? Why are we reading this? And why do worse things just keep happening? It feels like the message of this book is just to say, there are some people who are so damaged that there's nothing to be done. I don't know, they just need to die, I guess. I don't know. When, 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 when the author is describing the book as it goes from white to dark, then the whole point of this book is just to be as awful as possible. And that to me screams torture porn. I don't know. That to me just screams like the only reason that we are putting this character through this abuse is because it's dark. And I'm just writing something dark. Ah, are they quirky for that? Why, why would you subject yourself to the whole 700 plus pages of this? If you're considering reading this, don't. Save yourself all of the heartache. So let me tell you about what happens to Jude at the point where I stopped, okay? So first of all, Jude is very, I'm not gonna date people. That's not for me. That's something for y'all, but I couldn't possibly do that. But then he meets somebody. Caleb! They strike up a conversation, things seem to be going well, and, you know, they're like, okay, he decides to date Caleb. But here's the twist. The first time that Caleb met Jude, Jude was apparently sitting down the whole time. So the next time that Caleb meets Jude, Jude is walking and Caleb sees Jude's limp for the first time, and Caleb is like, whoa, I didn't know you had a limp, dude. That's pretty freaking cringe, actually. Ew! And then Caleb visits his apartment and he's like, wait, you have a wheelchair? Ugh, that's sick, dude. That's disgusting. 
Never sit in that around me. I don't want to see you in a wheelchair. And then we get some backstory on Caleb and it's the dumbest freaking backstory you could possibly imagine. So basically Caleb's parents both got really sick and he watched them both get worse and worse and end up having to use wheelchairs and things. And Caleb's takeaway from that was my parents were just weak. They just succumbed to the illnesses without fighting. Anybody who sits in a wheelchair just isn't fighting hard enough to be able to walk normally. <clears throat> so we have this guy who has this like, I can't handle people being disabled for any reason thing. And he's dating Jude. And when he tells Jude all that, for some reason he doesn't say, this isn't gonna work out. I'm gonna go find somebody who doesn't need a wheelchair. Instead he keeps dating Jude and it becomes an abusive relationship. And Jude just lets it all happen with this mentality of, I deserve this and I'm so broken that I just have to take what I can get even though Caleb is like beating him. And what you get to when you get to page 370 is the most drawn out description of every sort of abuse you could comprehend being done by Caleb to Jude. Just an extended scene of Caleb abusing Jude in every way that you can imagine. Who is reading that? I was done. I I put that book down like I'm out. Like I said, Jude is a punching bag for Hanya Yanagihara to just have her little fun writing something dark and it's disgusting. The, the things I'm talking about here, this is a lot of serious topics, okay? Like the stuff that uh, Catholic priests uh, do to young boys and children, that's a very serious thing that happens a lot and it's scary and gross and horrifying. I'm sure that there's abuse within the foster system as well, which is awful. Kidnapping a child and turning them into a prostitute, a crime, an awful, awful crime. One of the most deranged, horrendous, sick, twisted, vile, evil, disgusting things that you can possibly do. And the book is doing all of this to Jude just to be like, look at how dark I can get. I, you know what I mean? It just, it's, it's disgusting. It's so disrespectful to, to actual people who have been through that. Like what if what if somebody who is a victim of child abuse is reading this book? Or what if somebody with a disability was reading this book? Or what if somebody with um, self-harming tendencies was reading this book? What does it do? It doesn't help. It can't help. I know how the book ends and it doesn't, It's there's no good ending, there's no happiness, there's nothing. One of the things I've already mentioned briefly is that JB, the artist of the group, eventually has an intervention pulled on him because he's struggling with drug addiction and he's fallen in with a bad crowd and a bad influence. And so the three friends come to him, pull their little intervention. They're trying to get him loose. They're trying to get him help. They're trying to get him into a, one of those detox things. What are those things called? <laughs> I can't think of it. And JB is lashing out at them with anger that is fueled by desperation and rehab. That's the word. With anger that is fueled by desperation, frustration, cravings, all sorts of different things. Anyways, he does an impression of Jude's limp. And when Jude sees that, He's so offended by JB's actions that he's unable to forgive him. He like cuts him out of his life. JB begs for forgiveness multiple times later. JB knows what he did was wrong, but Jude won't forgive him. And that is a really like strong stance for Jude to take. Good for him, right? But then when he's dating Caleb, he's getting actively physically beat and other horrific things. There's never a moment of being like, I'm not gonna tolerate that. His I'm not gonna tolerate that came through so strong with JB to the point that it didn't matter that JB was being sent to rehab against his will. It didn't matter that J JB was seriously suffering with drug addiction. All that mattered was that Jude in that moment was hurt and he was not gonna tolerate that or risk it happening again. But when Caleb is hurting him, for some reason it's like just, I deserve this, I deserve this, I deserve this. And that, I'm like, mm, why for JB but not for Caleb? You know what I mean? I don't get it, I don't know. There's so much self-preservation in Jude and like keeping everything close to his chest, but then he's in that situation and he's just like, eh, here I am, I hate it. I hate it. It's cartoonishly, fakely bad. Jude is not a real character. It's fantasy. One of the top five star reviews was somebody just being like, I'm 21 years old and this book is so meaningful to me. 
and it really made me feel older and more wise or something like that. I don't want to be a hater of the youth and their tastes, but I feel like maybe that the reason why people are liking this is because they haven't gotten to a level where they can recognize that their emotions are being exploited by this author and that actually what they're reading is torture porn and maybe they're feeling just like the emotions from it and they're latching onto that and feeling like that means the writing is good or something. I don't know. I don't want to hate on the youth, okay? I was once a youth. <laughs> I, I was 19 once. This book would have ruined my life when I was 19, okay? I harmed myself a couple times when I was 19. Uh, yeah, and this book is not what I would have needed. No, 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 no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. It's just wrong. It's just wrong to do this. You know what? Here's another thing that I actually did notice. Compared to how awful this book actually is in the meat of this book, this is just basically a light nitpick. But one thing that I did notice right from the start is that there are like no women within the story whatsoever. There are no consequential, meaningful female characters in the entire book. <laughs> and I find that so weird. I was finding that weird before I realized that I was about to embark on the most deranged thing that I had ever read. But I do think that that's worth mentioning because that was honestly going to be my initial criticism of it. Who the heck grows up with sick parents and walks out of that like, I'm gonna hate people who have to use wheelchairs. They're just weak. If they tried really hard, they could walk. <laughs> who does that? Nobody does that. Caleb's not real. Caleb exists to abuse Jude. I hate A Little Life. I hate this book. I highly recommend going to Goodreads or going to Storygraph and looking at the negative reviews. I can't even say enough. I've filmed for 32 minutes and I can't say enough. I just wanna sit here and keep saying that I hate this book over and over and over again because it's awful. I won't accept anybody praising this book. I won't accept it. I don't believe you. I don't believe that there's merit in this kind of writing. I do believe it is torture porn and I will not be subjected to it. This is one author's sick fantasy of them pushing the envelope, seeing how dark they can get, and then seeing how many people will eat it up. Don't eat it up. Spit it out. Spit it out. Drop it. Drop it. That's all I have to say. Just so you know, apparently there's a glitch happening on YouTube where if you subscribe to this channel, you're awesome. So keep that in mind. Do with that information what you will. Who knows how long that glitch is gonna be stuck like that, but for now, you should look into that. You could also leave a like if you liked the video, leave a comment if you commented the video, and subscribe if you want more book content because I do monthly book videos also. Thank you. And free Palestine.